in counterclockwise direction. So you have this as counterclockwise, you add a positive, and all of this should add up to zero. So that's your one of the equations of equilibrium. Now, <coughs> Fs, Fs by the definition is going to be the stiffness of the spring and the elongation. The elongation is known in this case as delta S. <coughs> we know the spring stiffness that's given and it was given as 50 pound feet. Then the elongation, the elongation is from this point up to this point. And <coughs> if I go back to the triangle here, you know this whole length is 6 and then you have delta S over 6. And from that triangle, this is going to be sine theta. So your delta S will become 6 sine theta. So <coughs> we multiply this here with 6 sine theta and the force will become 300 sine theta. So your force equation here this is going to be 100 minus 600 cosine theta plus you got 0 another 300 sine theta and that gets multiplied by 3 cosine theta and this should go to zero. <coughs> Here, <coughs> this equation could be rearranged and it could be rearranged as 6 times 3, that's 1800 sine theta, sine theta, that's this term, minus 600 cosine theta, minus 100 and that goes to zero. And you can divide that by 100 if you want, and that's going to become 18 sine theta cosine theta minus 6 cosine theta minus 1 equals zero. So that's an equation in theta. And I, I could write this as the sum function in theta which is given by that equation. Now how do you find theta from an equation like this? <coughs> when there, there are two possible ways of doing it. One is this could be arranged as let's say 9 sine 2 theta equals or minus 6 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. That's one way of arranging it. And then, <coughs> see there is no direct solution. It's not like you could directly solve this equation. What you could do is, you could make a plot. I mean, you could create a table and <coughs> you could use theta at one end and you use F theta on another hand. So you will do what's called as the trial and error. And <coughs> at this point we don't know where the theta is going to be, but it should be greater than zero. And <coughs> so you can start with the theta as 10. And you find a value of F theta then you find the value of theta at let's say 20, then you find the value of F theta for that value. Then you go let's say 30, you find the value for F theta. So from this equation, for every value of theta you choose, you're going to calculate the value for F theta. Then at some point, <coughs> if I plot this theta, What you're going to see is 
on one axis you're going to have theta, another axis you're going to have f theta. And if you plot it, then the plot might look like this, where this value is theta 20 and this value is theta I mean 10, 20, I'm sorry, this should be 20 and this, this value is 30. So <coughs> what you have is you have f theta as a positive at the end and f theta being negative at the end. So you have a positive value here and a negative value here. So your actual theta is somewhere here. And this table only tells you that your theta is greater than 20 and it's less than 30. And that's all you can get out of those numbers. 